So here we are with the old first gen here. This thing is beautiful, beautiful. So I'm going to actually start the old third gen up here, give it a fire, get it out of the way. We're gonna do a little video here with the first gen. So I'm gonna let this thing finish cycling up here. Which by the way, take a look. Tomorrow is your last day to get her to win this truck and that truck at the same time. Giveaway for this one is officially done and over tomorrow night. So if you like this third gen, you like the way it's set up, you like the tails, the wheels and tires, the Starlet headliner, the fourth gen interior, if you like this thing, it's your last 24 hour reminder to get her to win this thing if you're interested and that giveaway will be over. Every $1 is 30 entries towards winning this truck and this one when you enter right now. It's a dual entry promo. It's very limited. It's only available for the last three days of this giveaway. So get in while you can. Entered for two trucks for the price of one. Know something else crazy about this first gen this is after sitting all night there's not one drop of fluid under this truck that's wild to me just because they're so old most of the seals and gaskets are so old it's just they're just prone to leaking it's nice and easy pull it out i got it in here tight next to my wife's car there two of one all we did not finish in yesterday's video so we're going to go over some of the other details on this truck and go into some more specifics on this thing so we went over in the previous video how clean the truck was um, it doesn't have any rust on it super clean doesn't leak any oil it doesn't consume any oil um it's got you know the brand new stainless steel mbrp exhaust new shocks all around new brakes all around new brake lines it's got you know a whole bunch of new stuff he replaced the heater core and he replaced the EC components and lines. He installed these gauges and he was a machinist by trade, but he installed the gauges and all that himself too. So this is not considered like an LE edition, like a limited edition. And I'm gonna go into some of those features on this truck that just kind of distinguish it between different generations or models or years, like more specifically years of these trucks. So this truck is an automatic transmission, but it's the old school automatic transmission. So it does not have, this is not an overdrive transmission. Back when these trucks were originally made and designed, you know, they were not used as, for the most part, highway speed trucks. Now this truck has no problem getting up to 70, 75 miles an hour and just, you know, going for it. But that being said, it does not have any cruise control. Okay, there's no cruise control anywhere on it. It does, it does not have overdrive, which means it does not have an overdrive off button. It doesn't need it because it doesn't have it. It doesn't have power windows, they're manual crank windows but everything works and it even kind of pops into place there and locks up everything works on this stuff you can see the fan i don't know if you can hear that but it is it's only been running for 10 minutes and it's blown out super hot heat already so that stuff all works stereo works all that stuff they updated it with a pioneer so the truck doesn't need anything but it does have a few of those things missing that you know I guess would be considered more desirable in these things. Taking this into consideration also, I have owned one of these trucks before with no overdrive, and I have owned these trucks before with overdrive. And I will say this, compared to the complaints that I've seen, the overdrive transmissions, although they are considered to be 
I guess from most guys that I've talked to and seen in forums and stuff, they're considered to be the more desirable transmission because of highway speeds and being able to keep a lower RPM and all that stuff, which is totally understandable. It's more efficient and whatnot, but they are for the most part more problematic and more prone to transmission problems with a stock transmission than one of these. I've had one of these with super high miles on it and I did burnouts, beat the snot out of it. And it was, you guys have seen the videos on it way back. And it was the same transmission as this. It was a non-overdrive transmission. It was a 1990 model, but it was a, it might've been like a 91, but not a 91 and a half. It was a nine, 91, I think, but it didn't have, it was still a non-intercooled, which is what this one is. The truck wasn't anything special until we put a bunch of power at it. But even when we put a bunch of power at it, that transmission held that power and it actually felt really good compared to even my dad's old first gen, which was an automatic with overdrive. You start adding any kind of power to it and it, you know, it handled it well because we didn't go over the top with it but those transmissions with the overdrive it just seems like they were built a little bit more fragile and power sensitive than these and they're just more prone to overheating and having those types of problems now again i will say this so again for the most part it's a more desirable transmission because of the overdrive and being more fuel efficient when you're going down the road and highway and stuff like that um, but for the most part guys i mean come on it's an old diesel anyway and uh this thing it does good it does really good transmission feels awesome and uh, i remember talking to our transmission guy one time and i was asking him about how hard it is to build one of these transmissions and he's like the components in those non-overdrive transmissions are so simple he's like the way to build them he's like not a lot of people build them unless they're going like really high horsepower just because they seem to be pretty stout the way they were built from factory but the building process is very simple on those things compared to the components that go into all the later generations of transmissions there's just more to them um, which of course over time there's just more added to all these trucks in general as time goes on that's the gist of the interior and the transmission and some of the main key features that people are probably going to be asking in the previous video which was does it have an overdrive or non-overdrive transmission you know and if you if you don't fully understand these trucks in the years of models you just wouldn't know but this is a non-overdrive model no power windows it does not have the power lock option so it's not an le edition but everything that it does have it does work so we are now gonna step outside the truck and we're gonna go over some of the minor exterior things that are different from the later the slightly later generation of first gens with different options these are not power mirrors these are completely manual adjust mirrors so you do have to open the window move it around in position and then it kind of sticks where it's supposed to for the most part at least these ones do they're not like completely loose and flopping around all over the place i already mentioned in yesterday's video i believe that the front end styling is just different it's the original first gen diesel front end styling it is not the later first gen model styling so there's just some very small features that can be converted I personally like this look just because everybody converts them over to the late first gen style. And I personally don't mind this look at all. Again, it's all just preference. And there's going to be guys that say, oh, I don't, I don't like that front end. I like the later first gen just because it's the more iconic first gen front end styling. Me personally, I don't mind this at all. And I'll show you guys under the truck here. This thing is super, super, I mean, just super clean. All the bed rails are intact, all the cross members, all the leaf packs and hangers, bumper hardware, tow package hardware is all newer. It's got brand new Bilsteins on the front and the rear. And I mean, you can take a look under this thing, other than a little bit of oxidation and surface rust, like just there from, you know, sitting and condensation. I mean, this thing has, there's zero rot anywhere on this truck. It is, it is absolutely beautiful how clean this thing is front to back too it's not just like the back end usually the back end is just the worst because that's where it's just usually more overlooked we keep it clean but it's beautiful and looking in the back of this thing he did give me some stuff he gave me a 2018 <laughs> jeep gladiator or jeep wrangler jl hood it's brand new in the box it's an aftermarket one i believe um, he gave me the original wheels that can go with the truck the original intake um the, the tailgate, you know, these things are still in, they're still there and they're intact. The latch works. It's a quick release tonic cover. So you just pull these latches on each side of the thing all flip back. So it's really nice. He said he never really used to haul anything though during the years that he had it. 
Um, so the bed's in really good condition. I'll have to empty it here and show you in the next video. It does have a little scratch there, a little scratch there. Just super, super clean. This guy even installed new seat belts on this thing. These are aftermarket seat belts, buckles. I mean, clearly they're aftermarket. I'm pretty sure the old ones had like the fancy metal buckles, unless that was only for the limited edition models. But I like a seat belt that works. This one works good. Let's get on down the road. Gen here, it's a beautiful day. It is perfect. Day. I mean, it is, for January, it's, it's so I mean, nice. February, I get my months all mixed up. For February, it's pretty freaking nice out. It's like 45 degrees today. We're gonna do a zero to 60. sophisticated about these trucks like there's literally nothing about this that's like oh wow how did they come up with that design there's nothing about it. i mean they're all just like it's a bunch of steel with a super basic reliable industrial style motor in the thing with a non-overdrive transmission with a big old long bed on it it's just a work truck mm -hmm. i mean i wouldn't go work on this thing now because although it'd be fine i mean this this being it needs to be kept in perfect condition in our glory days, you know what I mean? Be ashamed to actually use this thing for a truck. But let's get the, let's get, I was, I was gonna crank my window down so that they could hear the exhaust out your side. <laughs> no power windows, folks. that has dislikes of a two-wheel drive first gen the ride quality is so much better than a four-wheel drive with a solid axle and leafs in the front yeah it's wishbone suspension it's not four-wheel drive but listen this thing is beautifully smooth compared to one of those four-wheel drives i mean because back then let's be honest the suspension technology was super limited and if there was anything else available dodge surely didn't take them up on it because these things are like they, they rode like freaking log wagons. But this one rides really nice with that wishbone front suspension. Lord Janus. That's a lot of sheep. Those are a lot of sheep. That's a lot of sheep, dude. This is film the Amish guy, bro. You don't film the Amish people. Uh, dude, they're gonna see this video and come after us now. They're like, dude, you can't do that. But we like to film the Amish. You like to film the, film the Amish. Disclaimer, I don't agree with these heathen activities. The handling of this thing? It's basically, it's basically like a Porsche 911. I mean... Oh, I did forget to mention, it's also got a brand new uh, power steering uh, box, pump, whatever. And a new power steering shaft or whatever it is. Apparently works, right? Steering's pretty tight. 
I mean, wherever the wheel goes, the thing, it goes. Nice and smooth. I mean, that's how they're supposed to work, folks. I mean, we got up to about 70 there. The thing sounds good. I mean, I'm not going to tell anybody else that, but... Actually, the speed limit is 70 here anyway, so... No harm done. That's a beautiful car, guys. We did just test the sound system. I'd give it a solid 10 out of 10 for this truck. For this truck, it's perfect. I would blare music right now for you guys to hear it, but then I'd get demonetized. And to be quite honest with you, I kind of like being monetized. So we're not gonna do that. But sounds really good, you don't have to worry about that. Bluetooth works, radio works, tuning, selecting station, that all works. And uh, it's beautiful, she's beautiful. Sounds great. Sounds amazing. I'm sitting on a sofa right now. I mean, guys, come on. This is the kind of bench you want in your life, trust me. It's pretty legit, and uh, the truck runs good. It sounds great. Through the couple of gears that it does have in these non-overdrive transmissions, it ships amazing. And everything works. Everything works. Interior, it's simple. Manual windows, you know, no big deal. Manual crank windows, you know, not very many buttons, there's nothing fancy. But it's super clean, it's super nice. And I'll just say this, sometimes simple is just, actually not sometimes, a lot of times simple is just better, especially in these old trucks. Sometimes more features you have is just more stuff that either goes wrong or could go wrong and then you end up just having a bunch of crap in your interior that would be cool if it worked, but it just doesn't work. It's perfect, runs good, sounds good. Everything about it's good. This is gonna be a wrap, but I will say this, if you wanna get entered to win this thing and that third gen that I showed you, guys, tomorrow's the last full day to get entered for both trucks at the same time. It's literally a BOGO, it's buy anything and you're getting entered in for both. So it's like you're paying for the cost to enter for one truck, but instead you're getting entered in for two. So like if you place an order on the store right now and let's say your order is 2,000 entries or 4,000 entries when you go to check out, you're not splitting your entries up between two trucks. You are literally getting those full amount of entries into both truck giveaways. And when we do a dual entry period, that's the only time that that can happen. Because after the dual entry period's over, you're not gonna be able to enter for both at the same time like you can right now. So take that into consideration. If you wanna get entered, this is literally no better time. And uh, catch you in the next video. Peace.